Hi and welcome. My name is Rafael Taubinger and I have here the NXP S32 K344 Evaluation and Development Board for General Purpose Automotive Applications. This video is about getting started with the NXP S32 K344 Evaluation Board and the IR Embedded Workbench for ARM for automotive applications. The board is populated with the NXP 32K344 MCU that's actually based on the 32-bit ARM Cortex-M7. The S32K3 evaluation board offers dual configured in lockstep mode ACLD safety hardware, HSC security engine, over-the-air update support and advanced connectivity and low power. Some of the hardware features that you can also see in the picture are 100 megabit Ethernet physical layer, uh, a switch for MCU voltage current measurement, user RGB LED, uh, two user push buttons, ADC rotary potentiometer, uh, two touchpad electrodes, and also a 64 megabit QSPI NOR flash. And finally, also Arduino pinout compatible expansion shield uh, support. There is also on board the debug interface via USB, and a 20-pin Cortex debug or uh, embedded thrust microcell connector for uh, debugging, for example, with iJet or iJet Trace. Uh, more details about how to use the board and available software, like, for example, the S32 config tools for pins, clocks, peripherals, drivers for AutoSAR or non-AutoSAR, um, some security firmware, uh, S32 safety software framework or safety peripherals, that can uh, be found um, on the following NXP link that is uh, being displayed on the screen. But we'll also keep this link uh, on the comments of uh, this video. So uh, let's move into practice. And uh, I will quickly show you how to generate and configure a project with the S32 config tool uh, in the NXP Design Studio. And then including uh, export to the IR Embedded Workbench for ARM so we can have the best op optimization results and take advantage of all the debugging features. So uh, I have here uh, S32 Design Studio and uh, in order to work with S32 K344 and uh, IR Embedded Workbench for ARM there are mainly two options. You can work with uh, Design Studio and use uh, the IR compiler linker, including also the CSPI debugger in the background. And this is accomplished with uh, the Eclipse plugin that gets added into Design Studio. Or you can work directly from uh, IR uh, embedded uh, workbench. So you have mainly uh, these uh, two options available. Uh, we will get started here with uh, Design Studio. Uh, mainly because uh, all um, uh, the configuration tools and uh, pin configuration tools and so on are here available um, in uh, Design Studio. So I have pre-prepared a project here to make it easier. But if you have um, the plugins installed correctly, and uh, the way to do that, there is information at ir.com slash Eclipse, where you can download and install them. Or if you just go to NXP website, you also get some information how to uh, proceed uh, on that. Uh, but once this is completed, uh, you just ha have to follow step by step. Uh, if you want to create, for example, a new project, you will see that uh, we have the option here. First, to select a device. Uh, I need to give a name here. Uh, and then we have S32K344. And when it comes to the tool chain, we can select the IR tool chain here and uh, the path uh, to um, the utilities, of course, can be uh, defined. You might get asked for, for that path um, when you create your first project. But as you can see, uh, the IR tool chain will be used here in the background. And that's exactly what I already have here in the project I'm using. And you can also do debugging directly here from Design Studio by using uh, the CSPI uh, debugger. And if we go here to the debug configurations, uh, you will mainly see uh, that we have here IR CSPI uh, debugger. And um, we just need to make sure that under the setup, we are uh, selecting uh, the correct driver. 
and there are a few debug probes that are of course supported. iJet from IR is uh, supported. Uh, there are a few others also uh, on the list here, even the simulator. And from here, you could just build and do the download and debug uh, to your board or, for example, this evaluation board. But um, just to show you that uh, the compiler gets invoked here, I should probably just make a clean here in this project before. And I can just do uh, the build uh, project. So you'll see uh, it's invoking uh, the IR uh, compiler. Uh, it might take a few minutes here, but uh, meanwhile, uh, in parallel, I can also show you uh, all about uh, the configuration here. So we have the S32 configuration tools. So if I open here uh, the pin uh, configuration, you will see that uh, the code is already up to date. It's actually building. But if you want to do any changes here on the pins and the mode of operation, uh, you can, of course, uh, do it here and regenerate uh, the code. So very straightforward. All the peripherals, uh, pin configuration, it's uh, done um, in an easy way uh, here. I mean, if you want to have a bit more uh, general overview, of course, uh, you can also look here inside um, all uh, the capabilities. So if you want to use other um, components from uh, the SDK, um, that's, of course, uh, also available uh, on the driver side and so on. So it's up to you on how you want to use this. Uh, good. So as you can see, I built my project successfully here with IR. And from here, I could actually go into a debug session, but we will save that uh, to run it from IR in Webber Workbench. And the first step that I need to do, and if you want some extra guidance, there is also uh, some steps documented here, how to export an S32 DS project to IR in Webber Workbench. So uh, that's exactly what I will do now. And uh, if I go here to the options, I can go here to export and we will generate this XML file. And if I click next here, it should be straightforward. The configuration is debug default. We will finish it here. And as you can see, it's generated here some information from processor paths and so on. So that's uh, what will be used uh, later on in Mavic Workbench. Great. So that step is done here. And now I can move here to IR and Babbit Workbench. And the first uh, step here on IR and Babbit Workbench is to create an empty project. So we create a new project, empty. I already have that step completed to make it easier. So what we need to make sure is that the project connections are enabled. So if I just double check here that enable project connection is active here, that's good. And from here, we can actually go to the options and add the project connections. We will use here Freescale Processor Expert. So if I continue here and confirm OK, uh, I have to look after that XML file. And it's actually here, Project Info. So if I open it here, uh, you will see that uh, the project gets populated with all this source code that has been generated. And also the best is that the settings are all uh, pre-selected, uh, for example, the device and so on. So if we just look inside the project here, you will see that uh, under um, the target, we have the right device selected, S32K344. Um, the linker file is set here uh, from my project. Um, we, of course, need to make sure we select a driver here. I'm using the iJet from IR here for debugging. There are, of course, a few extra. An alternative would be maybe, for example, the PE Micro, that it's well known also, uh, especially for NXP devices. Um, just two hints to make sure that everything works smoothly, especially if you're doing it the first time. Make sure to double check here that uh, the entry symbol here under the linker is reset handler. And for making sure debugging works uh, smooth out of the box, uh, make sure that here the vector table base is set to vtable. Uh, it's just a nomenclature that it's used a bit differently on the source code uh, generated by uh, the S Studio and uh, the, the code generator tools. So that will, of course, make things easier for you. Good. Um, so as you can see, we have everything configured and so on. We would be good now for doing a build. 
However, you might be wondering that the structure looks a bit different from what uh, we had here on Design Studio with some uh, folders here, board generators. Um, so you might be willing to just make that look a bit different. Uh, so you might be willing to make that look uh, a bit different. So what we also have from our side is that um, from IR, we have here at GitHub IR systems. Uh, you can maybe check it out, uh, some good information, especially if you are um, uh, willing to get some hints on how to use the tools and so on. But we are using here uh, the project migration tools, or it's, let's say, the EWP tool uh, that will populate a project with all the files that are inside a folder. And once you install this EWP tool, it will be available here under Tools, Add New Search Folder. So what we will do here is actually first we need to delete this XML file. Otherwise, it will always repopulate uh, everything what we have there. And then we can also exclude uh, here um, the rest of the search code. Uh, but the good thing is that all the configuration is still kept. So what I will do now under Tools, Add New Search Folder, I We'll just go into uh, the folder where I have all uh, the projects, click OK. And what will happen is that this EWP tool will populate the project with all uh, the source uh, code, I mean, C, C++, header files. So you'll see that it looks exactly uh, the same on what we already had before on uh, the uh, design studio. So if you look here, RTD, board generators, so you should have exactly the same uh, scenario here. Good. Um, from here, uh, since uh, the settings are already uh, completed, as I said before, uh, target and so on, uh, I should be good to build uh, this project. So I can just make a rebuild all. Uh, we will already see that uh, it's a bit faster uh, if compared to you know, doing the build uh, on uh, Design Studio. Great, so now the build is completed and I can enter into a uh, debug session. So do the download and uh, debug here. So the way it works is really straightforward. It will do the flashing and synchronize uh, the debugging. We should end that main here in our uh, debug session. And once we are in the debug session, we will see we have full access uh, to the memory, to registers, um, also various breakpoints that are available. Great. So uh, what I can do here now, uh, just close what we don't need. So we are in a debug session, and um, I can just leave it running for a while. And you have to trust me, there are a few LEDs blinking here uh, on uh, my board. If I just stop it here, it's in this test delay. So uh, the first thing I can do, if I look here under View um, Memory, that's the window that's already open, and also Register, that's open here on the right. Um, I can go to any symbol here uh, in the memory. You will find it. If I just drag and drop some other symbols here, it will take me to the uh, RAM memory here about this delay timer. So as you can see, you can look inside here. Uh, when it comes to registers, the same thing, uh, all the peripherals and so on. So I could even toggle the LED here from um, the, the right pin. So everything very handy and useful. So you can go step by step here uh, on the C code or either on assembler. If I click here, you can see that the arrow just moves from one side to other. Uh, and IR uh, with the CSPY debugger is very powerful, actually, uh, starting with all the different breakpoints. So we have uh, normal code breakpoints, uh, but we also have log breakpoints. We also have uh, data uh, breakpoints uh, that can be used. So very useful, very handy, all uh, available for you here. So you can uh, do the coding, build, debugging. Great. So I would also like to mention uh, the functional safety edition of IR Embedded Workbench for ARM, that it's ISO 26262 certified. So IR systems with IR Embedded Workbench and the NXP uh, S32K3 can, of course, help you uh, to accelerate the development of automotive applications. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget, please subscribe to our channel so you get updates for all the new videos we release.